All right. Let's uh, let's skip that one. Um, insulator. Let's try an insulator instead. Here's a solid plastic ball. It has a negative charge spread over just a small patch. And we said for an insulator, that's okay. We can just place a little tiny bit of charge on one part, and it won't spread over the entire, won't tend to spread over the entire object. Which diagram best shows the polarization of the molecules inside this uh, solid plastic ball? Okay, it's got to be two, right? The induced dipoles are created due to this electric field made by the negative charge. The negative charge makes an electric field pointing towards it, and so the dipoles are polarized this way. Positive charge is closer to the this negative charge. And then just the size of the dipole indicates the strength. The field should get smaller the farther away, the farther away you go, and the polarization, the dipole moment is proportional to the electric field. And also the direction, the direction in which it polarizes is lines up with the electric field, okay? So no problems there. What about this one? Let's say you have a solid plastic ball, and now you take a negative charge and spread it uniformly over the entire surface. And remember that the electric field inside a uniformly charged sphere due to charges on the sphere is zero. What's, which diagram best shows the polarization of the molecules inside the ball? All right, and 72% of you fell into the trap. Uh, so let's think about this. Now this is this is sort of a, a little factoid that uh, you got. You actually was in the book in uh, the last chapter. Well, let's talk a little bit more about it now. If you have a sphere, okay, and the sphere is uniformly charged. Okay. Doesn't matter whether it's a conductor or an insulator. It's just we're just talking about the geometry here. And the geometry is uniform charge spread over the entire sphere. The electric field due to that charge inside is equal to to zero, right? Okay. That's that's basically what it's just reminding you there. Okay. The electric field inside a uniformly charged sphere due to those charges. Okay. We're not talking about any other charges in elsewhere, but just due to those charges. It all adds up to zero. And we'll actually prove that more formally later in the course, okay? Uh, we just kind of take it as a factoid right now. Uh, it essentially has to do with cancellation, right? There's charge on this side making electric field pointing one direction, but it's, that field is canceled by the charge on the other side. Well, if there's zero electric field and I have a neutral molecule in a region where there's zero electric field, how's it going to polarize? It's not going to polarize, right? Qu question. Okay, what if the molecule is not at the center? Well, it is, okay, it's not at the center, but it says the, uh, the, the uh, result is that the electric field basically everywhere inside this sphere is equal to zero, okay? So even if you're here, or here, or here, or here, or here, if the electric field is zero, then it turns out that there's, there's no polarization. Okay. Now you might ask, well, what if you get really close to the surface and then things start to break down a little bit because as we'll see, and you'll actually have a homework problem on this for next time, we say it's a uniform charge distribution, but when you get down to the atomic level, there may be one atom that has an extra uh, electron or an extra ion here, and then very far away from that on an atomic scale, there's another one with a, an extra electron. And so what looks smooth and uniform at a distance may at the atomic level be kind of non-uniform, okay? It might be kind of point charges here and there. And so when you're at, right at the surface, it kind of breaks down. But as long as you get a few atomic diameters away, sort of a, several nanometers away, you're at a point where that charge distribution looks smooth. The electric field is essentially zero inside. Polarization is, is zero, okay? Ah, okay. If it were a metal sphere, So a metal, metal sphere, first of all, can we have induced dipoles in a metal? No, the met, the, it's, we're talking about a, a mobile CHC of electrons, right? Not electrons that are bound to individual atoms, okay? So even drawing dipoles is a bad idea because we're talking about a conductor, not an insulator. But then again, even in this case, what's the net electric field inside if this is now a metal? 
net electric field is equal to zero. In fact, for the case of a metal, it doesn't even have to be a sphere, right? It could be any old object. The geometry doesn't matter. And the, no matter what you have, if you have a metal at static equilibrium, the net electric field inside has got to be equal to zero. Okay. So this this is sort of a geometric property of, of adding up all the all the uh, electric fields due to all the charges, and you get this result, which we'll prove later. Uh, has nothing to do with whether it's conductor insulator. Okay. When you have a conductor, no matter what the charge distribution is, no matter what the shape of the object is, when you're at static equilibrium, that electric field's got to be equal to zero. Okay. Questions? Yes. That's right. Okay, so so what the issue is superposition of all those one over R squared for fields. Okay, because you have you have a point charge here, but you have a point charge here and here and here and here. Yeah, so, so essentially, uh, kind of a preview of coming attractions, what we'll, what we'll eventually do in the next chapter is we'll look at how to actually break this up so that if you look at it, sort of a segment of this sphere, okay, say at this end, and if this is negatively charged, then the electric field due to that segment is going to be pointing in that direction, right? Okay. The electric field due to the charges everywhere else uh, you know, if we look at you know the electric field due to this patch, it's going to be pointing in that direction, and the electric field due to a patch over here is going to be pointing in that direction, and the field contributions due to these segments farther away is going to be smaller, but there's more of them, right? There's more of them, and so I'm not proving this mathematically, but it's just kind of making a plausibility argument of how in an, inside a sphere you can get a situation where the electric fields are all canceling out. Okay, and we'll see this more formally in days to come. Good question, though. Other questions?